So Dynamic Fusion really is a bold new step for Romax technology and its customers. Essentially what it does is take an existing Romax designer model or concept model and convert it into a multi-body model. But thinking of it merely as a translator is really doing it a disservice. It's much more than that. It's a gateway from the Romax world of transmission design for durability, efficiency and linear dynamics in MVH into the world of multi-body, transient dynamics, non-linear dynamics, even multi-physics uh, and systems engineering. And we created Dynamic Fusion to address two fundamental problems that multi-body engineers see today. The first is that models are very difficult to build and take a long time to build, as any multi-body engineer will tell you. And the second is that striking the right balance between model complexity and accuracy is a very difficult thing to do. Too much detail means it's going to take too long to solve. Too little detail simply means you're going to get the wrong answers. Um, so the solution provided by Dynamic Fusion is to automatically create that model. That saves you the time. And crucially, it gives you just the right level of detail up to a frequency that's specified by you, the user. Um, no more, no less. That's going to make sure you have that accurate model, but also a model that is as simple as possible. From that point, you can then go on to export that model into uh, forms like MSC Adams or Modelica formats, which can be read by many Modelica compliant tools such as Daimler. So we're going to have a look at Dynamic Fusion in action, and we're going to look at taking a model of a transaxle gearbox, converting it into Adams format, and then looking at some simulations in Adams. What we're looking at here is a relatively simple model of a transaxle, which has been created in concept in just a few minutes. You can see here the original model structure in a form that all Romax users will recognize. Creating the multi-body model is just a case of pressing the button, and a few seconds later, the model is generated. This particular model is valid up to a frequency of 5000 Hertz. And you can see here the fully flexible multi-body model superimposed on the original concept model. If we just show the multi-body model on its own, you can see how it's made up of a number of rigid bodies connected together by flexible connections that are going to allow it to deform in all six degrees of freedom. And we can look at the properties of each of those bodies and their connections by exploring the model tree. Translating the model into an Adams format is as simple as selecting the appropriate translator and from then on the conversion process is pretty much instantaneous. If we want to generate a simpler model for another purpose, for example, then you can change the required frequency range to a lower value and retranslate the model. So from the same Remax model, you can very quickly create several multi-body models for different purposes with different frequency ranges. I've added a time varying torque load to the input shaft, which is going to make the transmission accelerate in one direction, slow down, and then spin in the opposite direction over the course of two seconds. When I run the simulation, you can see that it progresses very quickly. And of course, this is because the dynamic fusion generated model is as simple as it can be while still retaining the level of accuracy that we requested of it. If we now view an animation of the results, you can see the transmission behaves as we expect. First, accelerating, then gradually slowing down and changing direction before spinning back in the opposite direction. Of course, we could also use this model to look at more complex phenomena in three dimensions, things like gear rattle, response to shock loads, for example, or even gear shifting events. We could also take this relatively detailed model into an existing Adams model of a driveline or even a complete vehicle if we wanted to look at system level simulations with a high degree of accuracy.
We can look at more complex Remix designer models, which can of course also be translated into multi-body models using dynamic fusion, including models which incorporate FE components, which are then represented as flexible bodies in the multi-body model. And we can look at models containing really quite complex planetary gear arrangements. And we shouldn't forget Medelica, which allows us to create and simulate transmission models which incorporate multi-physics capabilities like electric machines, control systems and so on, all within the same simulation. Medelica models only use torsional degrees of freedom, but just by looking at the complexity of a model, you can see how much benefit there is in using dynamic fusion to create it automatically. So the benefits of dynamic fusion are clear. You can build models faster, you can simulate them faster, and you've got models that have a guaranteed level of accuracy. But actually the true value comes from when you integrate this dynamic fusion into your design and development processes. The problems associated with traditional multi-body simulation meant that it was only ever used right at the end because that was all there was time to do, or it wasn't even used at all. But the speed and accuracy that you get from dynamic fusion means that you can begin to use multi-body simulations throughout the design process, right from the start all the way through to the end. And iron out these problems before they actually become problems. Um, and it's this right first time approach to CAE-led design that is what truly delivers high performance products, high quality products, faster and at a lower cost. Mm -hmm.